in the first part of the series, we learned that engineers have special responsibilities, responsibilities of a professional nature. In this uh, part, we will look more carefully at what it means to be responsible. Let me start with the story. Suppose you are an engineer at International Programmable Machines, IPM, which makes computers. You are visiting a manufacturing plant at one of M IPM's suppliers, which sells parts to IPM and to uh, other companies. You notice that a non-IPM system is not properly grounded and it could cause an electrical shock. What should you do? For what reasons? At this point, pause the video, talk among yourselves for about five minutes, and then restart the video. Welcome back. In this case, it appears that you might not have any responsibility at all. After all, you were not assigned the task of checking the safety of the electrical power system. In fact, you are not even employed by the manufacturer. So initially, you might think, this problem is not my business. But in fact, it is. As a professional engineer, you are responsible for safety. Let me tell you another story uh, that may illustrate the different meanings of responsibility. Uh, this is a case in which software errors caused uh, uh, in the Therac 25 machine resulted in, in deaths of patients. In er the early 1980s, Atomic Energy of Canada Limited made a Therac 25 uh, cancer radiation treatment machine that was used in um, several sites in the United States and Canada. Between 1985 and 1987, radiation overdoses by the Therac 25 caused severe burns in patients uh, the, these burns killed three patients and seriously earned three others. So we might ask, who was responsible? The operator who administered the massive radiation do overdoses which produced the severe burns? The software developers who wrote and tested the control software which contained several serious errors? The system engineers who neglected to install the backup hardware safety mechanisms that had been used in previous versions of the machine? The manufacturer, AECL? The government agencies? In fact, all were responsible in different ways. So there are different kinds of or responsibility. Uh, the first kind, we might say, is causal responsibility. Uh, the operator's keyboard entries caused, caused the overdose. When the operators uh, typed commands on the keyboard, that led directly to the overdoses. Uh, we might also say the uh, hurricane was responsible for blowing down uh, the trees. That's a causal form of responsibility. Uh, an important kind of responsibility for engineers is role responsibility, where it's uh, somebody's role or assigned task. In this case, the software engineers uh, were responsible for developing and testing the control program. That was their role. Uh, unfortunately, they overlooked some uh, subtle timing errors. Role responsibility, then, is when you are assigned a task or by virtue of your position. Legal responsibility is whether you can be sued. So in this case, uh, the manufacturer was liable for damages and could be sued um, in court. Finally, perhaps the most capacious form of responsibility is moral responsibility, which can be shared unlike the other kinds of responsibility. Many engineers are together morally responsible for safety. Rather than assign blame for past event, moral responsibility focuses on future actions. We say that um, when we say somebody's a responsible person, we're saying that this is a virtue, that it's a personal characteristic uh, that's a good characteristic. So in that sense, engineers are morally responsible for safety. All engineering codes of ethics prioritize the safety of the public as the most important professional responsibility of the engineer. Uh, for example, the Code of Ethics of the National Society of Professional Engineers says that engineers shall hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public. That means no matter what other responsibilities engineers have, and they have many, uh, the most important responsibility is to ensure the safety of the public. Furthermore, this obligation is shared among all engineers. So when you see unsafe objects or practices, you're professionally responsible to act even when you're not, not assigned that task. It is still a professional responsibility that you have. In the scenario that I started with, uh, at the very least, you should alert the safety engineer to the problems. You may not, want, may not be able to solve the safety problem by yourself, but you're responsible for doing something, taking some action 
that uh, will s ensure the safety of people who use that system.